phonics time. So I've kind of mixed up a few of the things that we have been talking about into this lesson, which is what I would do if we were at school. So I was thinking about how to do that, and I noticed that the greeting I gave you this morning talked about nonfiction writing and about um, spring. So I thought, well, with our phonics today, we're supposed to be talking about how when we write, we look all the way across the word, just like when we read. So we're not just putting letters and sounds anymore. We're really thinking about things we know. So I was thinking about, well, what are some things we know? And I made a list. I'm going to show you the list in a minute, but I'm going to go over it first. I think that it's important that we always think about vowel sounds. We know every syllable and every word has a vowel. And we always say try short, try long, and then move on when we're reading. So remember, sometimes the vowel is long, sometimes it's short. Look for words that have silent E. Think about if your word that you're writing has a silent E, which is going to make that vowel long. I want you looking for parts of words that you know, like those sounds we were talking about last week, the U-C-Ks and the U-N-Ks, and those, those mix of letters that are seen quite often in words. I want you to look for digraphs and blends and think about that as you're writing as well. Both reading and writing phonics is obviously part of both. They go hand in hand. As we always said at school, reading and writing go hand in hand. Syllables. Remember again, each syllable has a vowel and other sounds as well. And endings. Cannot forget endings. A lot of you had the goal of don't forget to look at the word endings. Some of you were making up endings or dropping endings, which was changing your reading, your writing, your stories that you were making. So I wrote these down. I'm going to hold it up if you'd like to freeze the frame. Whoa, there we go. So things to notice. Vowels, long and short, silent E, word parts, blends and digraphs at the beginning and the end of words, syllables, and word endings. Okay. I wanted to freeze the screen. That can help you when you're doing some of that writing, just to remember what you're looking for. And I thought, well, if I'm asking you to do it, then I'm going to do it myself. So I wrote a little story, and, and it's not even a story, I should say. I wrote some nonfiction, and um, I didn't, obviously, it's on a whiteboard. I don't have room to write a whole one, so I wrote the beginning. And I want to show you some of the things that I'm noticing from this list. I'm putting the list next to me, which is what you could do. If you've screenshot it or you want to write it down, chart, you know, jot it down and put that next to you, the things to notice when you're writing or when you're reading. And I'm going to look through the story I wrote, noticing all of those things we just talked about. So my title was called All About Spring. So already I'm thinking, all right, um, about has two syllables, about. So I'm noticing that the first syllable has a vowel, and the second syllable has a vowel blend, about. And of course, I remembered my ending sound. In the word spring, I'm noticing two things. I'm noticing a three-letter blend, S-P-R, spur. They each make their own sound. And ing, one of those word families we learned that we see so often. Already, I'm noticing so many of those things. So it, it's going to help me with my reading. It's going to help me with my writing. I started with, I know a lot about spring. I would, this is a sight word we've talked about. Remember the could, would, should family? The O-U-L-D family? Like, oh, you see the word, see what's on the end? Silent E. It's going to make the vowel say I. So if I had just written L-I-K, it would say lick. <laughs> I would like to teach a noticing more, a noticing digraph. This time it's at the end of the word. You're noticing word, uh, vowel team, E-A, says E, U, sight word. I know many, oh, I see the chunk any, but I'm also noticing the Y on the end that says E, and I'm thinking it has two syllables, many. This time, Y is the vowel. Remember we used to say A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y? In this case, Y would be used as a vowel. Things. Oh, look. So we've got the digraph, we've got the ing, and we have an ending, S, just like the lesson you did on Monday with the three parts, noticing that they 
work together going all the way through a word. Birds. Oh, there's an S. I have an ending. Hey, and guess what? I remember to put a capital B at the beginning of my sentence. Birds tweet. I have a blend at the beginning. T, W, two consonants. They make their own sound. Birds tweet this time. Oh, silent E again. Of sight word. Year. I hear. Oh, look at the E, A and the E, A making that same sound. Them in the morning. Oh, look at this word. I see a chunk. O, R. M, or at the end, morn, and then the ending we know, we don't have to go through it, we know it's ing, morning. So there's just so many of those things that help us to notice in words when we're reading, when we're writing, when we're spelling. Have fun. Notice all of those great things. I'm going to show it again. These are what you're looking for. So you can take out your writing. You can even take out a book. If you haven't done enough writing where you think that you need, you know, you can use it, you should be, first of all. But if not, take out a book. Or have someone write to you. Have mom or dad write you a, a letter and see if you can find some of these things in it. Have fun. Reading and writing. Fun.